Let me just push it on. Uh, I think this oil line ruptured. Oh, um, there's no reason. Alright, welcome back to another episode of Eric Knows Things. Featuring, <laughs> <laughs> featuring Eric. Here we got everything laid out on the table. We got the turbo, we got the couplers. Uh, inner cooler piping and the exhaust piping is back here. Today we're finally gonna go ahead and put everything on. We're gonna do the inner cooler, hot side, cold side. Are you excited? Gotta work. Yeah. It's already hot. <laughs> Why did I come to Eric's Florida? coming from from the North Pole, and he's now in <laughs> Florida. <laughs> dude, we're gonna see Brittany with an intercooler on. What? I'm not that excited, dude. I don't yeah, think he's that it's, excited. Yeah, it's whatever. It's just a turbo on a car, you know. I'm, it's not like I've been waiting Comment for like. Comment below if you think he's ready for boost, because I don't think he is. All right, a thousand likes, six fifty. Fifteen hundred likes. 700. Oh my, dude, if this car hits 700 wheel horse, I'm gonna cry. I'm legit gonna shed a man tear. The welds, the man behind the welds, and the dog behind the welds. You know, so these are the outsides of the welds, obviously, very pretty. But the important thing to us too is the inside. We actually back purge all of our piping, which is where we put argon in the middle of the pipe so it gets rid of all the oxygen and it makes a stronger better bond yeah dude i want to learn how to weld this stuff does agita approve of turbo kit like i was pretty decent this our stage one kit is just this right here it's just all the piping okay the oil lines. which what size is the, are we using the piping just like real quick so, rundown in case i haven't seen the previous videos yeah so the y pipe to the muffler is two and a half okay the muffler out to the turbo is three inch three inch. and then obviously it's a three inch exit okay. with a three and a half inch tip okay all of the intercooler piping is two and a half except for where the maths are those are three inch with boosted applications with the math having boost going through it you have to have a three inch pipe if you have a two and a half it will not make as much power because it's uh you can't make as much power because the math can't read that high right okay it can only read a certain amount of air so the bigger pipe you put the math in the more boost you can put through it mm -hmm. or airflow i should say right. so the stage one our stage one kit is just what you see right here except for the oil lines and turbo stuff like that but it comes with the turbo the oil lines and the piping it's sixty five hundred dollars for this what danny bought and no turbo right <laughs> we haven't put the turbo outside, but yeah, it does come with a turbo. turbo. Goes right there. Do you guys use the S366 that we're using on that, mine? Yes, we use that on all of our kits unless you specifically ask for more power. Okay. So if you're just a stock motor car, that's what you get. Okay. If you're a built motor and you want to make a thousand, there's a bigger turbo we go to. Not much bigger, but a little bit bigger that flows a little bit more air. Um, it's not a Borg Warner, it's a different turbo. It's not Chinese, but we are keeping that a secret right now until we finish our testings. We build the kits around what the customer's needs are. It's not just a generic kit for all the cars. This is our generic kit. This is our uh, G37 or 370Z rear mount kit. It'll work on all wheel drive. It'll work on the G37Xs. Um, I haven't tested if it's a Q yet. That, that's something we're working on currently. And the kit that Danny got was the stage two kit, which comes with obviously the injectors, the fuel pump, the, uh, the methanol system, which is our, which is the snow performance methanol system. The stage two and a half kit, comes with the AEM methanol system. So it's a little bit more of expensive methanol. Um, instead of with Danny's, how it's just an on off switch is a little bit better in those situations. But for Danny, who's just daily driving it and gonna race it every now and then, not a big deal. Yeah, we fabricate all this in the house, um, all good stainless steel piping. Uh, it's all 308, it's all TIG welded 308. The aluminum's all good aluminum. You know, nothing's bad quality, so. Yeah, that's pretty much it to the turbo kit. Uh, we wrap all of our exhausting exhaust piping there is no if and or buts about it uh, heat is a very is a thing you have to control you yeah. can't just have heat out of control uh, so we wrap all of our exhaust piping it's just how it is there's no request to not wrap it because we don't do it unless you want to ceramic coat it we don't leave it unwrapped <laughs> his ringtone is so weird <laughs> <laughs> sorry um and then obviously all the bare pipe uh is uh the cold side yeah cold side so that pipe right there that goes right over the exhaust this actually goes right in front yeah, of it so that connects to that right so it there. starts off here so i'm guessing these three inch obviously so, come from the throttle bodies yep, that's the throttle bodies there's your methanol buns and are these the piping that goes through the next to the radiator support Correct. or in there yep. right intercooler then out through the right side of the car then this pipe right here and then this pipe connects to that pipe in the front and, and then, then it goes to the turbo straight back uh people talk about all oh, the spool times being slow you'll see when we put on the dyno it's really not. The whole point of using the Borg Warner Turbo is inherently, it's designed for a diesel truck. 
that is what they are designed around. Diesels run, their exhaust temps run at a much colder temperature than gas. So they're designed around the fact to spool quickly with lower exhaust temp because exhaust temp and flow is what makes turbo spool. It's not just air, it's also right. heat. So yes, there is less heat behind, you know, with all this piping. That's another reason why we wrap it all is to keep the heat in it's, the pipe yeah. until it gets to the turbo. There it is. <laughs> Dude, this image just doesn't feel real. Like this right here. It's just, oh my gosh. This is a replica tile blow up. It's a rep. It's they a good do rep. not work. They work just fine. And if they don't work, what happens? Nothing majorly happens. If they leak, it creates a boost leak. You won't make enough boost. Right. If it gets stuck closed, I'll get a cool not, turbo sound. You'll get a cool turbo sound, like a Supra. It's it's fine. Fine. Now, if it was a wastegate, that's. The wastegate's a different story. We, we have. We don't yeah. Out on. We use the good Turbo Smart 45 millimeter wastegate. Right. A lot of people always don't do this. This ring is very important. Yeah. This O ring seals between that and this. I have to make sure you do that. Look at that. Look at that. Dude. Dude, this is a prank. You're gonna take this back home when you go back, right? Yeah, no, this is just a, this is just a tutorial video. It comes back off. It's not actually that. Did I knew it? He bro. actually screwed you all when he said you sold the Tome because he really didn't. He yeah, didn't. Tome's still in my room. I yeah. sleep with it every night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what should we put on the front? Comment below what you guys think I should put on the intercooler front right here. Bam. We should put bam. O3 Cummins with a 366 turbo. Sounds like it's like cammed or something. It is. Oh, it is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, that almost is went ham. <laughs> you don't have a what? I don't have a Tomei anymore, dude. That's it, I'm done. I'm not me anymore, bro. I need a Tomei. But we got bolts and, but we did get some other hardware, nuts and bolts for mounting the methanol tank in the trunk. But for now, I'm gonna get to putting uh, the MAF sensors and the methanol uh, injectors into it, into the intakes. Put a uh, number threes in here. So dual number threes should be enough methanol for him and it won't suck the dry tank too quickly. That looks so freaking cool. Look at that, bro. Yo, I love how everything's black now. Like the the, the cooler is worth black. The front cover is black. Wow. That looks good. That looks clean. You might even bagged. Oof. There we go. 
So the turbo goes right here. Turbo goes right there. Right there. Waste gate on the other side, Waste and then the goes piping right goes yep. over there. So. so, another thing is, why am I, why do I have a muffler in the middle of the turbo kit? Well, we the first ever uh, turbo kit we built that was rear mounted, we put no mufflers in it, and it was obnoxious, like super raspy. Yeah. Super loud. So totally not even like not. a nice sound. It was. Just it like, was terrible. It was yeah. just. It was worse than a Tomei. Oh wow. Yeah. So we put. I found. I figured out that putting either a resonator or a muffler or some combination other thereof, in the middle of the exhaust, not at the tip, but before the turbo. It makes it sound way better. See how it comes from intercooler up there, down here, coupler, all the way back, curves up. Boom. I don't actually make the turbo kits like this anymore with all these pie cuts. Okay. Um, how do you do it now? I actually go up through here. Oh, you go up the, next to the tranny? Yeah, between the trans right here. I feed the pipe right oh, up so there. Oh, so you go more like a straight or you yep. have to go up? No, it's more straight. Oh, I straight see. Piece. Right. So this is the, tor the TurboSmart Hypergate 45. Um, this one is a little different than the regular gates. The Hypergate actually has um, passage in the bottom here for coolant, a passenger okay. to keep it. So uh, most of them don't run coolant through them? Most of them don't. These do in certain applications where in like very heavy motorsport racing, where the gate can get very hot right. and it'll actually um, mess with the boost a little bit too much. Well, you have the top of the gate, which is this part, and you mm -hmm. have the bottom of the gate, which is not the bottom, it's technically the middle, but this portion is what does all your boost control. The bottom of the gate, That's always... Just where the... Oh, okay, I'm... Okay. So this is for coolant, and you can tell by it has a little like, coolant logo on there. Oh, that's cool, yeah. But the other ones, these two, are actually for where you put your... Um, vacuum lines? Vacuum lines. Okay. And the top as well, but we'll just focus on the bottom. There's no the top. The bottom, you put whatever spring you want inside of this for the uh, for whatever boost pressure you want to reach, and then you feed your boost reference, which is a vacuum line from the intake or from the boost piping somewhere, into the bottom of the gate. Are we going to use from the intake? Or? We're using from the intake. But what it does is when the turbo starts making boost and it reaches what the spring pressure is, the valve will open and it will hold that boost pressure. So there's boost going into the intake manifold. Right. It is entering the turb or the wastegate, the bottom of the wastegate, it's forcing that spring up mm -hmm. and it is telling the gate to open and that in turn controls the boost that the turbo makes. Because how does the car read? Let's say we're gonna run a 15 pounds of boost, right? So you're gonna be putting like a 10 pound spring in there, you said I think? No. Oh yes, I'm gonna put a 10 pound spring in here so that we don't have to rely too much on the boost controller. So you have the bottom, then you can have your boost solenoid, mm -hmm. which I'll show you how to uh, run the vacuum light for that. But it tees into the source that goes into this. So you take a T, you cut the line, put a T in that re that goes into this. And then that's that line, the T that goes in the engine bay that you're telling me, right? No, it's gonna be up the back. Okay. Then it goes out of the T into your solenoid, in one side, out the other, and to the top of this. So what that does is, yes, boost reference is feeding this, but it's also when the solenoid open and closes and pulses, it actually puts boost in the top of the gate, pushing it closed. So you're actually making, you can make more boost with that. You'll need 40 PSI boost yeah, pressure yeah, in a Z. Yeah. The highest I've ever personally gone to in a Z at all is like 25 pounds of boost. Is that built motor? That's yeah. built motor, yeah. yeah. So, all right. this is the Borg Warner S300. It is a S366 series turbo. It's a uh, journal bearing turbo. And a couple things we have to do to get it ready for going on the car is we have to clock it differently, which is where we move these two housings separately from the center. Okay. Because the drain has to be straight because gotcha. gravity has to feed through the turbo. Right. If you don't do that, if it's at an angle, it will burn oil and we don't want that. <laughs> Everything loose. Yeah. 
I do not tighten everything until it's all in right. and it's all bolted up because if one thing is not quite aligned properly, mm -hmm. then you have to loosen everything. Yeah. Flanges that we use, these bolts are just a little too small. It's gonna happen a bunch. All right, well, if you guys have been here long enough, you know that we've been waiting for this moment for years. Here's the turbo. Finally gonna go in Brittany. Super excited, I just twisted it. I hope that's normal, that's good. Dude, that turbo looks so big in there, bro. What? Look at that perfection, dude. Is it retreat? No. Oh, I gotta remake a hose, but that's not. You gotta remake one of these. So, guys, this is your oil pump. This takes oil from this reservoir and it feeds it back into the oil pan. See, obviously, it only goes one way. And we designed them to mount them right there off the stock bolts that are already hold the heat shield in, so. So this is one type of oil line. These are the screw together fitting style. And the other style is push lock. And I'll show you that here in a sec. So this is the one way valve. And all it is is it's a spring inside of the valve that shuts to keep oil or whatever other fluid only going in one direction. So, so there's no way you can go back. Yes. So you can see I can blow. I can't blow through this side. But I can on this side. You have to put onto the hose. Make sure you get all the little hairs in there. And you just push it on until it's all the way in. You actually see the hose in there. Mm -hmm. Put it up at the bottom. I gave you extra line, just okay. in case. So I'm gonna trim it up so it's nice. All right, the old part is done. Ooh, look at that tip, bro! Oh my god! Dude, oh. Old lines are done. Wow, we just got one pipe left. Yeah, one pipe up and a wastegate. We're gonna and do a wastegate, wastegate, yeah. We're gonna do the wastegate. Right oh, wanna do it right now? Okay, cool. Dude, right that now. looks amazing, man. We got the pump up here, turbo. This is a three and a half inch, right? So this is the diaphragm that I was talking about earlier. And pressure goes either through here or through here, or it goes in this top portion with the spring, which pushes back down, which shuts it, which makes more boost. Plus a yellow spring. Plus, no, plus a green spring. Oh, green, right, because it's So three time. and seven. It's 10. It's 21. Inner, middle, outer. Are we gonna put the filter? All the final piece of the turbo. Bam. Look at that. You have a boost at 370. Woo! I look like a madman right now. My hair is absolutely crazy. Eric also looks like I'm a madman. We both have crazy hair. Well, let's go. Good. And 
Look the at that. Is, it's not over yet. We still have, metal, we still have metal, meth, wiring, is, but it is boosted. Good. Turbo's good, all the piping is good, all the O lines are good. Oh my god. Crazy. Shout out to Eric, LMT. Dude, I, what Eric did, I don't know if anybody else in this planet would do. Drove 20 plus out, built the kit, drove like 20 plus hours to help me install the kit. Follow this man on Instagram and send him a message saying you like his shoes. Yeah, I might ruin. <laughs> <laughs> you almost messed it up. Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did. Hey, we LMT, LMT certified. Baby. Let's LMT go. LMT certified, baby. LMT power now. Alright, pump is wired up, let's see if it works. I hit your button. Is that how sound? Yep. Nice! <laughs> Don't start it yet. Don't start it yet. Ah. Alright, everything should be on. We should be ready getting ready to start. What about to do, brother? I am flashing the new tune on. That just made this is like a base map tune, right? Just so you get it started or whatnot. Our turbo, yeah. Dude, it's about to start. Oh my god. Off the right. I know. Turn the back? No, because he's going to crank now. So oh. we're going to build a little bit of fuel pressure. And oil pressure, I mean. Of course, I'm about to start. We've been doing this for like two days. This is two days worth of work. That's really good. All night or not hiding? Huh? All night or no? Nah, yesterday we stopped at 7 p.m. Yeah. Dude, I'm so nervous, man. The car's about to start. I am so freaking nervous. Sounds so good, right? It's like a like a beefy built, like strong car. I don't know. It's weird. Oh my god, it's good. What the? That sounded so cool. Obviously, we gotta do a couple more things. That's pretty much like the biggest thing. The car started, it's running good. Oh, so it doesn't even show the RPM or anything? No, the whole the whole dash is just off. Oh, well, that's not good. Let's go. Oh, it's leaking something. What is that? Is that oil? Just straight up oil?
Yikes. That's definitely power steering fluid. That's power steering fluid? Yeah. Uh, I think this oil line ruptured. Oh. For some reason. Uh, it's leaking out of your valve cover, sir. Out of my valve cover? Yeah.